G'day, this is Simon at South OC Cars and Coffee. I'm with Jim, a regular, a man who's no stranger to bringing special cars to the show. You used to bring your uh, Mercedes Goldwing that had belonged to your father-in-law. Today, Jim brings a very special car, something that you had when you were younger. Love this thing. What is it, mate? It's a 66 Lotus Ford Cortina. And that's a Mark One Cortina, correct? Yeah, absolutely. This thing is super cool. Check it out. Jim, a lot of people in the US may not know what a Mark I Cortina is, but you have a connection to it. Tell us about that connection. I, I bought one of these brand new in 1966. Uh, what happened was uh, Lotus Ford wanted to go racing and they had to manufacture a thousand of these to homogulate them for racing. So they sent a body in white over to the Lotus factory and Lotus completely finished the car. They wired it, did all the suspension, a twin cam engine, the gearbox from the Elan, and uh, they competed successfully for many, many years. Yeah, and what's interesting when we talk about this car for competing in racing and rallies and those sort of things, it's it's like, I guess, things like Daytona used to be. It was street cars that were in rallies and street cars that were racing. And so manufacturers had to build a certain performance level into their street cars and they then be competitive and at the time Ford in the UK where this was obviously built uh, didn't have a lot of fast engines didn't have a lot of fast cars didn't have Mustangs and things like that like we had over here the Cortina was what they turned to they had a smaller car called the Escort which by the way they also did a Lotus version of that as well and a Cosworth version I think as well uh, and then they had the Cortina but this the Mark 1 Cortina you could get this body in a four-door they made a little delivery van and they did all sorts of things out of this particular body but this was the quick one tell us about some of the differences in the Lotus compared to the standard street car well they they, they took the basic engine and put the a very sophisticated twin cam uh, head on it with Weber carburetors. They lowered the suspension, put uh, stiffer springs on them, roll bars. Uh, the car basically weighs 1,800 pounds, and at the time, the factory new ones were 105 horsepower, but it produced a very quick car because it had a numerically uh, low high ratio rear end, uh, a 390, so it was very fast out of the hole to boot. So Jim, let's talk about the story about you owning the car originally and then finding this car and buying it. Um, so the first one you owned, how old were you when you bought that? Uh, about 2021, my, my wife just got a, her first job and the first new car we bought was uh, right off the uh, Lincoln Mercury dealership in uh, Long Beach, uh, Lotus Cortina. Uh, so when you bought the car did you know what you were buying had you researched them had you seen them uh, on TV or in the paper or anything or did you just go hey that's a cool car well, I, I knew, want it I knew it was a special car it, it was quick I was into auto crossing at the time and I, I, I later found this was $500 more than a Shelby Mustang but, was it really yeah so that's I mean that's incredible and I guess that's what it costs to get Lotus involved um, so many little cool things. Let's have a look under the hood because that's where things get really special. This is so pretty under here. Um, unlike any other cars of this sort of, particularly production cars of the era, that beautiful hammer tone blue finish, those side draft Webers. But this is the way it came from the factory, right? Absolutely. Uh, I can only imagine what the average Ford dealer in the UK, who was used to working on the 1600cc version of one of these or 1200 or whatever it was, and the first Lotus one ro rolls in and it's got twin Webers and a twin uh, twin overhead cam. This must have been a, a scary and daunting thing to work on. Undoubtedly. It had a very elaborate header system. It, it's just, yeah, I mean, look at that down there. The headers are just, just uh, everything about this thing is so amazing. Uh, and what did you say horsepower this was compared to the original one? 105 originally. Oh, I don't know what the basic sedans were, but yep. out of the factory, this had 105 horsepower. Yeah, and a little light, light, tiny car that didn't have air conditioning, didn't have power steering. This is a really special car. And so you had the chance of buying another one. How long did it take you to find this one? I've been looking on bring a trailer and different uh, places like that for about 10 years. 
we, we finally had to sell this when kids came along and we bought a VW van of all things. Yep. And I just had to have another one. So a friend of mine said, hey, I see one for sale in uh, Costa Mesa, so. Oh, nice close by too, which is great. And, and and this looks all original as well. Doesn't look like it's had a lot of, a ton of work done. It looks. It's been fully restored. Oh, has it really? Yeah. Well, I gotta say the restoration job was amazing because it, it looks like this could have rolled off the factory this way. It is just absolutely perfect. Well, Jim, it's always great to have you at the show. You've always been a great supporter. I was so excited when I saw you bringing this car and then when you told me the story. As our winner of Car of the Week, you get this Meguiar's complete kit, including the hot shine foam, the quick interior detail of the Perfect Clarity glass cleaner, the ultimate car wash and wax, the hybrid ceramic detail, and the microfiber towel. Keep this amazing, beautiful little uh, Lotus Mark I Cortina in the condition that it's in, mate. Thank you so much for bringing it out, and congratulations. Thank you, Simon.